Greetings everyone, this is the Gardening Snail of Livingston, California. If you're interested in what's happening at City Hall, among other things, or just want to keep track of what our local politicians are up to, welcome to the channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when future videos are uploaded. Does Livingston still want a street fair? This video is the second in a series about possible cuts to city-sponsored events and contains an excerpt from the December 17, 2019 City Council meeting. It is part of a discussion and potential action item about council direction on possible cuts to the July 4th celebration, street fair, and sweet potato festival. This conversation had originally started at the October 1st, 2019 City Council meeting in which Mayor Gurpal Samra indicated he wanted to have the council evaluate these events for possible adjustments. The following clip begins with a brief history of the street fair and how it went from a one-month event to eventually a six-month event at the request of the council. After that, a couple of ideas were presented, including cutting the event back to the month of October and ending with the trunk or treat. After that, there was some discussion about possible reasons the event had dwindled. So our next uh, event is the street fair. So since 2006, the street fair has run in some capacity. It has been a month and for several years, and then it went to two months, and then expanded it, council's request, to six months. 2016, uh, the, it became a certified farmer's market, and the wages for market management were paid through USDA grant managed by the Merced County Health Department. The grant ended September 29th, 2019. Over the years, the event has dwindled in size. So street fair ideas, and these are all <laughs> eliminate the event, cut back to one month, preferably in October after the Sweet Potato Festival. One month brings eager participation from vendors and entertainment because it's not a long commitment. Also, this community doesn't come out until it gets cooler outside. In October, the weather begins to cool off. Uh, if the event is only one month, the department can manage it without hardship, and the event could end with a trunk or treat, which is huge. And then I have more blanks for other suggestions. Council, at your... Uh, just real quick, um, this was also discussed, correct, during the Recreation Commission meeting? Yes. And so these recommendations are coming out of that, or some of them are? Some of them are. Oh, okay. Yeah, for me, I remember when this thing used to be huge. So we need to look into is why did it shrink? Is it the way it was? it's managed? Is it promoted properly? We don't know what the reason is for, you know, it really, really dwindled. It used to be from one end to the other end, and it used to be a lot. So I don't know who's promoting it, how it's being promoted, how we're getting vendors in, you know, so I don't know if we, the promoter got changed, if that has something to do with I don't know. And this is something is also what we need to know is why, you know, going to one month, it may be the only alternative, but if it's based on that it's not promoted properly, then that might be an issue as well. Because I remember, I can't remember the name of the promoters we had that managed it, they used to go out everywhere and bring vendors in and lately there is no push or pull to go out and bring the uh, vendors in it's more of let us know if you want to be here if not oh, that's fine you know before it used to be go to different events and bring in vendors and I think that part is not there now yes I got a question. since the USDA grant ended how much would this cost the city employees the cost wise for you to manage it, run it? We we actually have a five thousand dollar budget remaining for this year um, to 
would, and if we go six months, we would have, well, actually, I'd have to look at it exactly. Um, and I think even eliminating it or leave it up to four weeks, that's more than enough. Because I never see more than 20 people there. You just waste the city's time. Yeah, Councilmember Kang, when it first got started, we had different promoters. And this thing, I'm not saying that's where it is, but from uh, D Street all of then, it used to be packed with vendors, packed with people. I'm not sure, and Jackie remembers that, of course, Jackie, you know. I'm not sure, so that's what I'm asking, you know, for us to, do we go to a month, what, or do we try a different promoter, or what do we do, you know? Yeah. I mean by promoters, I'm just saying people were going out and bringing people in, you know? But they, well, he's talking about when the Dela Cruz's had it for several There were days. other people that came in also. So what I'm seeing is lately, and I don't, I don't know the exact date, and, and I know, Jackie, you do a great job. I have always had faith. I'm not sure if that uh, effort is still there, or is it that I don't know how... I don't know how it's done anymore. There's a person there. I don't know if they're going on promoting it or not. I don't know what that, that effort is right there. So the time that we started to, it was, I can't remember the exact period of time, but there used to be quite a bit of attendance. And if the community doesn't wish it, then, then Mr. Kang may be absolutely but, correct, you know? Well, like, like Jackie said, she has over $6,000 in the budget. I mean, if you want to take the challenge, try for four weeks. If it works out, we can continue. Otherwise, four weeks end it. To me, I think uh, this event needs a, a whole systematic look at and change. Um, I remember when it used to be a lot of attended very well, and uh, there was a lot of more vendors out there. Um, but yeah, throughout the years, especially the past couple of years, it's, it seems like you know not a lot of people attend. But the reason I think not a lot of people attend is because there's not enough vendors out there. So what I would like to see, it's uh, a better outreach to getting more vendors out here, promoting it better. But then at the same time, I feel like you know this event might linger way too long to keep the interest of the people. Um, I would like to see it. Maybe could we even just as an idea? Maybe once, once a month for a couple months, for two, three, four months. I don't know. Maybe one, one, maybe the third week, the third Thursday of the month, or something like that might work as well. Uh, spread out and gives you guys more time to do some outreach and promote it better instead of having it like just one month every week. Yeah, yeah. It was more. Yeah. Thank you. Councilwoman Batista, any comments? Processing. Processing, okay. Yeah, you know, I I like the street fair. I think it's good for the community and it's good for them to get out. I know some days in August it can be miserably warm. But I think uh, someday, you know, people, I remember these people used to have a lot of fun out here. I agree. I think uh, I think it's good for the community. I think it's, it brings some people out. I remember uh, when people come out, you know, and um, maybe you just. Uh, I think somebody just needs to spend more time with the whole fair and really put an effort in doing outreach and maybe connecting with nonprofits, um, with the schools. Maybe you know, like kind of what you guys been trying to do with the band, band coming out here and playing and stuff like doing right. Those kind and of when events. you have a one month commitment, you're going to get people to do to, that. Yeah. Also, if it goes more than 
two months, it's something that's going to be out of my hands. We would need to hire somebody and make it clear to them what it is that we want. Um, but I do know that if we want the schools to come out, um, for instance, the Girl Scouts, I had them coming out doing crafts each week. Well, at six months, I'd about killed them. I mean, it was just way too long for that kind of commitment. How were you guys outreaching to get vendors out here? By going to the swap meets. Um, our focus, because of the grant, was on fruits and vegetables, which there is hurdles and jumps, and you know. So we had, we had, we wound up with three regular farmers. If we would have had more than three, the the three originally here would probably leave because that wouldn't make it worth their while to. Um, they wouldn't be able to sell enough to stay busy. We had a wick that came out. I mean, there's just. There, it is a whole systematic thing that needs to be looked at. What is our focus? Where do we want to go with it? How often? You know. Would it work if it's once a month for three months, let's say, or four months? Would we be able to do that? As long as we kept it on the same day so that the residents weren't confused about when it was. You know. There's a recreation commissioner here. What are your thoughts? Okay, uh, hold, hold on. If you guys are going to talk, I need you to come out so we can get you guys on on the record. Don't blame me. Blame him. He called you. So if you guys wish, no, no. I, I, we encourage, please come forward. Yeah, come on. Okay, Linda Dio, uh, president of the Rec Committee. Well, we discussed it. We discussed either just eliminating it all completely or the four weeks and just have it done. And that's what, that's what we came up with as a committee. This once a month, we don't think it's going to fly. Just like with the band, like with the music in the park, it's four weeks or five weeks, six weeks, and it's done. And everyone looks forward to it. There's a huge turnout out there. So just like with this, I feel as, a, as our committee, we agreed four weeks or even six weeks, if you want to push it six weeks, but just the six months is not good. It's not productive for the city. Okay, thank you. Is something to say? Diego Castillo, P.O. Box 855. From running a flea market, or if I have an experience, uh, these type of events have a really high turnover of vendors. Um, and from talking to uh, established flea markets, you probably have 10% of the vendors that do the majority of the, of the business. And when we used to do events at the flea market that we used to run, we would target it on dates where there wouldn't be any other events. So let's just say, if, pick a month where there's not a fair going on or where, where you're not competing uh, for, for your customer base. Um, and I think if you do it too long, you're going to lose traction. And, um, and, and same, like she was saying, uh, if you're going to have food vendors or if you're going to have uh, whatever type of vendor you're going to have, try to limit to where that vendor is going to be successful. Because if you have 10 food vendors, you'll end up losing them because they won't make enough sales. So that's just my feedback. Thank you. Anybody else? Please come forward. Gabriel Salazar again. Oh, let me lower this, sorry. 1024 Sunset Court. Um, I'd like to maintain and keep that, um, the street, the, the street, the farmer's market. I think it's a, a good venue, good, good opportunity for folks that don't have the means to access any other fresh fruits or vegetables out in the community. Um, as it is, we live in a disadvantaged community in certain areas, uh, census tracts. Uh, so I think it's a good opportunity. Some people, like, maybe they don't have the opportunity to leave town, go to Turlock or Modesto. So this is their, their fun experience is going to, like, the street fair um, farmer's market on Thursdays and something that they look forward to as a family. Um, that's just my thoughts. I mean, I like to keep it, uh, keep it, maintain it. Of course, as you know, the economics matter. Um, like, folks, I mean, I defer to the Parks and Rec Commission, like, what they say. But, I mean, I think if it's 
organized and planned and coordinated and promoted properly, it could probably be once a week, like the gentleman just said earlier, um, a day, you target a, day, target a day that um, is not used widely in other communities, a, a, um, a designated a farmer's market day. Um, but yeah, I'd just like to see it you know, move forward and hopefully we could uh, maintain it, but I mean, the economics matters and, and staff time and resources matter, so let's see what we could do. Um, and it's cool that, that staff's here making this presentation trying to look for creative and innovative ways to, to continue it, so thank you. Thank you. Jose Moran, Livingston, California. Um, from, pre from previous experiences, I think that uh, there's a couple of different factors that are very important. One of the main things about this event is to try and bring out the community. I don't think that so far we're looking to attract people from outside, but actually doing it for our people in the community for them to actually uh, most people that come out to those events is people that just want to come out and walk out and talk to people and see people that they haven't seen for a week or two weeks or so on. You know, it's not so much, you know, do we get high quality? I mean, it's, it's just to come out, have a, some some fast food, some churros, some some fruit, some fresh fruit and stuff like that. And not so much like the high quality stuff that you might find like at some high market stores, you know. Um, and I think that uh, yes, probably six months, it's a little bit too long, uh, but maybe six weeks, eight, eight weeks, two months, once a week, same day, uh, making sure there's no other events in the area where our people m might want to go. Uh, and if we can have entertainment, like we used to have entertainment, a uh, different type of entertainment, not necessarily someone just playing music, but you know, we, like other cities have done it, like having the fire department do uh, some demonstration, you know. Um, then PD doing another, another demonstration, having and making those informational uh, showcases, maybe bring someone from the county and do something else. Uh, and those are some of the things that I've seen that are very successful at other farmers market. And they're not necessarily farmers, farmers market, they're just street fairs, you know, without any restrictions. Uh, but at the same time, you also want to have uh, one, two or three people selling the same item that way. You know, like people were saying, just make sure that it's, um, that it's convenient for them to come out, out here. And it's not so much, they're not able to make a lot of profit. And um, I cannot um, compromise myself to help out every single week, but I'll be more than willing to help out um, every now and then with, uh, with this program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moran. Anybody else? Mayor and Council, uh, I was here in 2012, and I just want to kind of back up, back to the 4th of July. Um, I remember when it was downtown. The one thing that, I think it's a great place where it's at now, because we talked about downtown, and I know the one thing that we struggle with is the Pentecost Hall has their same event, usually that same weekend, and they have a parade, and, and we struggled with trying to manage both at the same time. It came, became an issue once they moved, it, it, it took care of that, and so we, we appreciated that. Um, as far as the street fair, um, and, and also, if you looked at uh, 5150, they promoted a few a few uh, events out there. They're they're professional promoters. They do a great job, and I have all the confidence that uh, that uh, Carlos Vieira and Julio Valadez would do just a fabulous job if they de if their board decided to take that on. Um, I think they do a great job, and we'd be happy to, to be partnering with them to provide safety for that for that event. Uh, as far as the street fair. Uh, I think you lost a little bit when you, because I was here again when it was shorter. It was kind of quality versus quantity. The longer it got, it seemed like people kind of got tired of the same old thing and uh, and stopped. You know, you, you lost the interest of some of the communities. So if you keep it short, pack it with events. And and one thing I was telling our city manager and uh, and Jackie, have you know, when you think of a street fair, have something that you can attract the the, the kids, whether it's a a little ride, a little little train, a little little slide, something that attracts the kids to come, and, the, and they're going to drag their parents out there. Also, it, a city manager has a lot of contacts with with artists. Have like a little character booth where a, a budding artist from college can come and do like do little artist renditions, characters of the kids, and things like that. Something to draw those kids out there because they're the ones that we want to kind of give them the, those memories of coming downtown, living scene, and having fun, and and eating a corn dog and, and, and 
writing a slide or something like that. But if you if you condense it down to kind of a shorter period, which is a little bit more manageable, and and, and you're going to get a lot more people coming that want to come downtown. So that's just my thoughts. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Like, like Jackie said, the grant ran out. So if we keep continuing more than four weeks, we're going to have to pull money out of our general fund. The whole goal is to save 10% and not to add extra 20%. So we got to look at that before the grant pay for everything. Now, starting next year, we're going to have to pay out of our fund. Okay. Well, what what is your suggestion, sir? Yeah. Okay. We're not going to bring this up for another time. We're just going to get started, okay? So. From what I gathered from this discussion, six months is just too long for an event like this in Livingston. Cutting the event back to one month and shifting the focus from Certified Farmers Market to a more kid-friendly family event would be a way to breathe some life back into the street fair. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. 2020 is going to be an election year full of major decisions about things like water quality, and water rates, and who will be our county supervisor, mayor, council members, city clerk, and city treasurer. And I'll be doing my best to keep you informed about what's going on all along the way. If you're subscribed to the channel already, you might want to check and make sure you're still subscribed so you're notified whenever a new video goes live. And subscribe if you're new. Until the next time, this is the Gardening Snail of Livingston, California, because not every critter is hiding under a rock.